Hey guys, so I just finished listening to They Thirst on Audible uh, by Robert McCammon. Now this book was written in 1981. So I do have the paperback copy of this, um, but I have a bunch of Audible credits, so I decided to listen to it instead. Now I mainly listen to audiobooks when I'm drawing or painting or doing something over here at my desk. I used to listen to audiobooks a lot when I would like ride my bike or go walking, but it is freezing outside, so there is none of that. So for the time being, most of my Audible listening to is at my desk. I did used to listen to a lot of audiobooks when I was in school, um, but I'm no longer in school, so obviously I'm not doing it that way. All right, so They Thirst is a vampire book, and it is set in 1981 Los Angeles. Now, I read this book when I was about 10 years old, so the story behind this is that uh, when I was 10 years old, my parents brought me and my sister and my brother to Maryland, where my uncle lived, and they left us there for a month. Now, I didn't know at the time, but my parents uh, were considering getting divorced, which they did eventually get divorced, and they didn't want us anymore. They were just going to leave us there. Uh, first, that's why we were there for so long. But eventually, they came back and they got us. So while I was there in Maryland, this was one of the books that my aunt and uncle had on their uh, bookshelf. And I picked it up and I read it when I was 10 years old that summer when we were almost abandoned. So that's the story behind that book. So as I was saying, They Thirst is a uh, vampire story set in the 80s in Los Angeles. Now, even though it's set in the 80s, it's not really dated. Like... So, like, some of the names of celebrities and things are dated, but they don't really, um, like, use dated technology or anything like that. Obviously, there's no cell phones, computer usage is limited, and stuff like that. But you can still read it in present time and not get confused or not feel like it's an old book. So, I did enjoy this. I really did enjoy this book. The one thing in this book that really bothered me, story-wise... Um, is when we finally meet the bad guy. Up until we meet him, just like hearing about him and the things, you know, that people know about him made him seem like this big bad vampire master who could like take care of anything and whatever. But then when you finally like are introduced to that character and he starts having dialogue, he becomes this weak, almost... um very, very unlikable, um, kind of like wimpy, weak-willed thing. So in this book, uh, I believe his name is Victor, he was turned into a vampire when he was like 17, so he's a perpetual teenager, and he definitely acts it. But how they describe him and then how he actually behaves are two different things. And I did not like it. I didn't like him as... A villain. I mean, the way that they made him seem was awesome, but then when they started developing his personality and his actual characters through dialogue, it was like, what the hell? Like, it didn't match up. So that was one of my big issues. Any of the parts in the book where he was actually talking, especially when it was like a monologue or like he was having uh, like talks with his master or whatever he called that guy, um, he became like this idiot child man and it didn't fit with the persona that the narrative in the book created for him. Other than that, I had a few issues with the actual narration. Some of the words were pronounced a little bit off. Um, crevice, maybe it's, I know, you know, in other countries people pronounce crevice differently, but this is not a narrator from another country. Um, so he would say crevass every time, so I'm like, we're the... It's not how you say it. Um, also, one of the things that he kind of William Shatner did a little bit, there were parts where, where he'd be like, we are on the highway and we're getting off exit 45. So I don't know if those are like pauses in the actual narration where they like had to like splice them together where he had to stop and come back. But they're just minor things. Wasn't anything, you know, horrible. So I liked all of the characters and how they progressed aside from the villain. And I know it's not, you know, a thing where we need to like the villain. And it's not so much as I need to like him as, like, a person. But he was an unbelievable villain. Maybe that's a better way to put it. 
I just think that there was a giant disconnect between the narrative version of him and then the actual version of him when he's talking and, uh, you know, you're getting to know his personality. So I don't remember any of this book from when I read it when I was 10 years old. So I'm 40. So that was, you know, 30 years ago. And I don't remember a single thing aside from the fact that it was a vampire book. Now, when I was also in Maryland, when I was little, I read another vampire book. And I thought it was this one, but apparently it's not. And I'm going to have to try to figure out what it is. The only other title of the vampire book that I remember reading, I think is a vampire book, is We Are Legion. And I don't know if that's the one that I'm thinking of. So basically in this other book, it was a vampire book. And I remember a scene where they were in the water and they were it's like a camp. And they were, I don't know, like there was a big fire. I, I just remember bits and pieces. But I remember one thing that really stuck with me at 10 years old was that there was a doctor. I believe it was a female doctor and then a male character. And they were talking about what created these vampires. And what developed was like a shadow organ once you got bit. And that is what required blood. But I don't remember what that book was. I thought it was this book, but it is not this book. So... I'm going to have to dig into 80s vampire books a little bit further because I don't know what it is that I'm missing. Anyways, I do like Robert McCammon as a whole. This is when he still had the R in his name. Um, I do have a bunch of other books from him that I need to read. I have The Listener, which is the newest one. I think I have Mystery Walk. There's a couple other ones that I haven't read that I do have still. So... If anybody has read They Thirst, let me know what you think about it. And uh, yeah, just if you haven't read it, keep in mind that it is an 80s book and that the villain is not very well written. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.